rides against the manor where tyranny is lord, rich and poor. Together we go. Yes, I'm all right, thanks to you. <coughs> How is he, Glenn? Uh, it's all right, but no thanks to those scoundrels. Come on, boy. What's your name, my friend? Hedges. Tom Hedges. Go and get the water bottle from my saddle, girl. It's gone. All my money's gone. Every last penny. So it was your money they were after. I wonder why three masked horsemen should trouble to attack a defenseless serf. It's always money the masked horsemen are after. A masked horseman? Aye, that's what we call them around these parts. Every time a serf sets off to Melchester to buy his freedom, he's waylaid and robbed by the masked horsemen. Seems most curious. Why so? If the amount of money is a goodly sum. Oh, it's not the sum I'm thinking of. It's the scar on the leader's arms. It spelled our death to Prince John. Well, that would seem to make him a follower of Richard the Lionheart. But since when does a follower of King Richard's rob a serf on his way to buy his freedom? What I can't understand is this. How did the masked horseman come to know that Tom was in possession of so much money? Before a serf can buy his freedom, he must first post his name on the sheriff's rolls. Yes, but if that's so, why doesn't your lord furnish it with the proper protection? Sir Roger protects us as long as we're on the manor. It's on the high road that we are robbed. Sir Roger? Sir Roger of Wickenham? Hi, you know him? Well, we don't know him, but we know the lady he plans to marry. We're on the way to his castle for the ceremony. Hmm. Sir Roger's a good lord, and he's offered a generous reward to whoever captures the masked horseman. But he's done little good. Hmm. Well, you think he's right now? Well, that it's you and I, together with our friends here, that are going to have to capture the masked horseman. Well, that's something easier said than done with these armed men. It's not the two henchmen I'm worried about. It's the leader I want. The one who has the words death to Prince John on his own. Aye, he's the clever one and no mistake. Mm. Clever as a beast of prey. Then we shall have to capture him as you would capture a beast of prey. Well, how's that? By setting a trap. Well, oh, that's good, Tom. Now, Matt, Harry, cover the noose with the scattered leaves here. Jack, you run the rope from the noose to the sapling here. Oh, good. Give me your thong to tie it down. Yeah. What's the matter, Gert? You look as though you didn't think any of this was going to work. Well, there's one very important fact that you're omitting from your scheme. You don't know who the leader is. Well, not now, but I hope to in 24 hours. Oh, then we're not going to the wedding. Certainly we are. Well, consider this. The man who fought me was an expert swordsman, and therefore probably someone of rank. No, Lady Jane says Sir Roger has invited every noble in the Shire. Yeah, but the fact that the leader can use a sword doesn't prove he's a noble. Well, by itself it doesn't, but there's something else. These men commit only one kind of crime. They rob serfs about to purchase their freedom. That means that they're politically opposed to King Richard's charter of vassals' rights. Yeah. Oh, Jack, I'll give you a hand. Well, how are you feeling now, Tom? Oh, a lot better, sir. Oh, Gareth, tie the rope across the path here. By tonight, do you think you'll be able to set out again for Melchester? If I had my money back, I'd leave this very moment, sir. Oh, good, it's my purse. Thank you. Well, there's the money, Tom. But don't set out until tonight. The full moon will give the masked horsemen a chance to see you. Now, when you hear them, leave the road and head straight for this path. But don't go too fast because you don't want to lose them. On the other hand, don't go too slow because you don't want them to catch up with you. Is that clear? Oh, good. Well, everything seems to be in order. Let's hope that by this time tomorrow, we'll be rid of these scoundrels. Sir? Mm -hmm. There's one thing you've forgotten in your plan. Oh, I know, the words on the leader's arm. Well, what do you make of it? Every puzzle must have a piece that doesn't seem to fit, but it will. And when it does, it'll prove his identity unmistakably. Come. Sir Ivanhoe and his servitor Gert. Yes, my lord. Sir Roger says you're to be assigned a page. Charles! 
Oh, where can I find Sir Roger? I wish to pay my respects. Sir Roger will meet all his guests in the Great Hall tonight. In the meantime, I've been instructed to take you to your chamber. Thank you, Charles. Will there be anything else, Sir Ardenhoe? Oh, yes, I'd like a suit of silk for my servitor. Can you furnish him with one? Well, I think so, sir. Thank you. A suit of silk? For a man who is a blacksmith? That... It'll look most peculiar. Well, I need your help. And though protocol doesn't allow you to sit at the banquet table, it does not deny you the privilege of entering the great hall as my serving man. Here, take a look. Why, it's Jack Ludlow. That's what's he doing here. Or maybe he's bringing extra food for the banquet tonight. Uh, perhaps. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, we can be certain this robber knight will take care not to expose his hour and incriminate himself. So we must look for some other clue. Will these do, sir? Yes, fine. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Gerth, you'll wear them and very well, too. I shall be downstairs paying my respects to Lady Jane. Congratulations, Lady Jane. Thank you. You remember my father? Oh, miss, as well as my own. How are you, my lord? Glad to see you again, Ivanhoe. And this is Sir Roger. Roger, this is my old and very dear friend, Sir Ivanhoe. Welcome to Wickenham Hall, Sir Ivanhoe. Lady Jane has spoken of you so often and so warmly, I feel I know you almost as well as she does. My congratulations to you, Sir Roger. You're a lucky man. Thanks. Excuse me. Oh, I've arranged for you to sit next to me at dinner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must welcome my other guests. Until dinner. Well, just as I predicted. You look splendid. Yes, well, now keep your eyes open. How about that fellow over there? He's about the same size and he's got a moustache. Well, just about everybody here has got a moustache. We're going to need more proof than that. Well, Sir Michael, I understand you were out hunting today. Yes, and a splendid hunt it was. I intended to join. And then after the wedding tomorrow, we plan to take a long honeymoon. Sir Roger thought we might like to visit Ivanhoe. I'm sorry. You're very absent-minded this evening. Tell me, who is that? That's Sir Cyril of Wentworth. Loyal to King Richard? Everyone here is loyal to King Richard. Otherwise, he wouldn't be at this table. Yes, I was afraid you'd say that. <laughs> Gentlemen, I give you a toast. The bridegroom, Sir Roger. Sir Roger. Sir Roger. Sir Roger. It's no use, Ivanhoe. We'll not find out who it is. Well, at least not before the wedding tomorrow. <laughs> Pardon me, is that? Yes, sir. Come, Ivanhoe, don't be so exclusive. What are you talking about so intently? We were discussing an encounter we had earlier today with three masked horsemen. Indeed. I'm sorry you did not mention this to me before. I thought it of little consequence. Well, in these parts, we feel that whatever the masked horsemen do is of great consequence. Do you not agree, my lords? Yes, uh, indeed. Do you have any clue as to their identity, Sir Ivanhoe? Well, one of them, the leader, I would say, had four words burned into his right arm. What words were those? Death to Prince John. A follower of Richard, robbing a serf on the highway? I find that hard to believe. I too, my lords. Odd too, they should attack you. They usually confine their thefts to defenseless serfs. Well, they were laying a serf when we came upon them. One of yours, I believe, Sir Roger. Was the man killed? Oh, no more than injured. In fact, he plans to set out again for Melchester. So soon? Well, I thought it would be a safe thing for him to do, especially if he went tonight. The masked horsemen don't ride at night. At least, so I've been told. But has this serf the money to purchase his freedom? Oh, yes. I made sure of that. I gave him my purse. Mm -hmm. 
I still don't understand why you had to announce it like that. I'd hope their leader would give himself away by his expression. Trouble was, they were all so interested, it was impossible to pick on any one man. Blow out the candle. Anyone there? No. Not even a guard. In my opinion, I've no. You guessed wrongly. Shh. What? I didn't guess wrong. Whoever he is, the leader's in this castle. Well, whoever the leader is, he's much more clever than we thought. He's locked us in, all right. What are you going to do? I'm going to the trap. There's only one reason we've been locked in here. The masked horseman planned to waylay Tom again. I'm coming with you. No. You stay here. I'll be back before morning. this. I have to leave in the morning before the castle awakens. Tell Lady Jane I'll be back in time for the wedding. Well, as Master Weaver of Melchester, I thought you might be able to tell me if you made this piece of cloth. It is no cloth of mine, nor that of any weaver in England. Are you sure? It is a French cloth, made of French wool. I see. Oh, one more question, sir. Can you show me how to get to the office of the public rolls? Right, it's there, at the end of the street. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> found what you were looking for? Yes, thank you. I have a request. You see the signature? Yes. Yeah. Do you think you could copy it exactly for me? Oh, it is not difficult. Please place the scroll on the desk. Signature is ready, my lord. Thank you. Yes. It's perfect. Thank you, my friend. Good day to you. Good day, my lord. Let me go! Not until you've answered a few questions. Why me? I thought you promised to find the leader of the masked horsemen. And so I did. Come on. Seems very queer behavior for a wedding guest. I don't understand it, and I don't like it. If Sir Roger hasn't learnt in five years who these men are, how does Ivan know expect to do it in 24 hours? There he is. Well, I must say it's not a moment too soon. Where are you going? Oh, uh, I'm just going to tell him that he's not a moment too soon. What? The 
ceremony is just about to begin. Pembroke's furious with you. He says that you've thrown a great strain on his friendship. What are you going to do with him? I'll bring him to the side door of the chapel and hold him till I call you. He's going to identify the leader of the masked horsemen. It's a lie. I don't know a thing. Is it? We'll see if it is. By all the saints, I've known. Where have you been? Uncovering the identity of the leader of the masked horsemen. Who is he? There's still a link missing in the train. When I find it, I'll let you know. Scribe. A word in your ear. It's of vital importance. Now, Sir Ivanhoe, what is this important matter? Well, if you please, I'd like to see the signature on the wedding contract. But it's nothing to do with you. Unroll the parchment. As I thought, the signatures don't match. Thank you, my friend. Sir Roger. Do you take Jane, daughter of Thomas of Pembroke, to be your wife? I do. And do you, Jane, take Roger, son of Ernest of Wickenham, to be your husband? In the name of King Richard, I demand a halt to the ceremony. Who are you? And what explanation do you have for this brash interruption? Sir Roger is the leader of the masked horsemen. Ivanhoe is mad. Quite. If you were not a friend of Lady Jane's, I should run you through on the spot. But as you are, I'll give you an opportunity to explain yourself. I shall. Gerth? Ludlow, wasn't it your job to inform Sir Roger when one of his serfs planned to buy his freedom? I don't know a thing. And just last night, didn't you enter this castle to tell Sir Roger about the trap that you and your fellow serfs had helped set for him? No. I see. So rather than admit what you know, you prefer to swing on the same gallows as the masked horseman. Come on now, man, tell the truth. And at your trial, I'll ask the sheriff to at least spare your neck. Come, Sir Ivanhoe, you're trying to put words in the mouth of an ignorant serf. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even if this serf could be persuaded to admit to the truth of what you suggest, who in England would take his word against the word of a lord? Not against a lord, but against an imposter. For that's what you are. An imposter who murdered Sir Roger of Wickenham and then appropriated the deed to his estate granted him by King Richard. Prove it. The signature on the deed does not match the signature on the wedding contract. But the seal does. And isn't the man's seal more important than his signature? I wear my signet ring on my index finger. Where do you wear yours, my lords? I see you too wear yours on your index fingers. But not this man. He wears his on his small finger. I so prefer it. Or is it because Sir Roger was a small man and his ring, which you also appropriated, does not fit any other finger? It is the reason. He is not Sir Roger, but Guy Monet, a well-known bandit in France. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ludlow. And now perhaps you'll answer one more question. Why are the words death to Prince John on his arm? While a bandit in France, he ran afoul of Prince John and threatened to kill him. In a fit of anger, he burned the threat of revenge on his arm. And how do you know this? I served him in France, just as I served him here. And what answer have you for that, Sir Roger? Only that everything Sir Ivanhoe and this wretch have said is a lie. You call me a liar? I do. I accord you the rights of knighthood only because of the doubts you have implanted in Lady Jane's mind. As you are host, I have the right to choose weapons. I do not choose swords. The mace, the lance, the axe, what would you? I choose the ancient test of strength and fire. Is this a jest? Have the oil pots brought to the main hall.
not choose to bear your arms, Sir Roger? Seek your own arm. Now, do you doubt that Sir Roger is the leader of the masked horsemen? Our stay here is at an end. We will go. Of course, my dear. When did you first suspect that Jack Ludlow was an informer? When we took Tom Hedges back to his hut. Well, all the other serfs, when I asked them a question, had to think before they answered. Now, Ludlow, he was always there with a ready answer. Too ready. Poor Lady Jane. Oh, I don't think Lady Jane will spend long being sorry for herself. I know my Lady Jane. <laughs> when I went to bid her goodbye, she looked sad, but smiled bravely. Did she say anything? No, she said, well, never mind what she said. Why not? A man who grumbles at wearing the dress of a courtier shouldn't listen to words of flattery from a lady. <laughs> Justice he is fighting to win a better day. Shout a cheer. 